Hi, and welcome to Studio 411. I'm your host, Larry De Silva, and uh, thank you for joining us. We've got another exciting show. Today, we're, uh, we're going to explore culture of a different nature, not acting or music, but uh, some uh, European culture, for lack of a better phrase. And uh, we've got a uh, wonderful guest with us today who is a uh, modern-day Renaissance uh, native Italian uh, lady, uh, by all means, entrepreneur, teacher, author of Italian English language e-books, and I'm going to pronounce it correctly, Mauro and Carla Bianchi's Trip to Italy. It's a series of uh, 12 e-books that has uh, been written and recorded in English and, of course, Italian. Uh, our guest, uh, Lee DeMilo, um, is multilingual, obviously, and also uh, works with uh, corporate organizations as well as uh, regular folks like you and I to kind of show them uh, the language, but uh, from a different standpoint, not so much a classroom setting, but kind of where uh, they are uh, enjoying the fruits of uh, Italy in a total spectrum, both culturally, uh, food-wise, as well as I'm sure some history thrown in as well. Everything short of taking them right to the, uh, the Colosseum itself. So we welcome uh, Lee DeMilo. Lee, thank you for joining us today. Pleasure is mine. Very good. Thank you for Very having good. me. And, uh, now, um, you uh, uh, were born and grew up in Italy. You spent uh, the early part of your life there. So uh, tell me a little bit about uh, your, uh, your upbringing. San Lorenzello is a very lovely, tiny town in the province of Benevento, uh, which is in the region Campania. Uh, my parents um, uh, owned uh, like uh, olive groves, uh, so they made their own olive oil, wine, um, it's a very, very charming little place. And we've got a couple of shots later. Uh, you'll uh, uh, tell us a little bit more once we get uh, there. But now, um, again, tell me a little bit, because again, Europe, I, I, I'm sure there's, there's certain things that are uh, universal. Again, uh, uh, things like work ethic, values. Mm -hmm. uh, again, you know, from the, the conversations we've had off air and, and from reading up on you. Again, that's something that's, that's something you, you value quite a bit, is not only the values of growing up in your homeland, but of course, you know, as I think even with my parents, whatever, uh, uh, work ethic, that's, that's, a, a, Absolutely. that's a term that is not used as much as it used to be, at least not in, in this country. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I think I struck a nerve. I think I, I actually hit on somebody who believes what, uh, what I uh, say, because sometimes people nowadays, they look at you like work ethic. What's that? You know, it's just... Yeah. Just show up and get a paycheck now. It's a no, we don't do too much on, you know, like I said, for the money in Italy. Um, I grew up, for example, on my street, we knew each other. Um, my neighbors were like a family. I used to call uh, uncle, I used to call them uncles and aunts. Mm -hmm. If uh, they needed something, I remember my, my parents used to tell us, um, you know, go help it out sure. and um, if they gave you like a, a quarter for example like a cinquanta lire at the time uh, when we used to have a lira instead of euro i was just going to say now <laughs> with, the, with the euro that has changed Absol yeah, absolutely yeah. we wouldn't take the money we wouldn't take money now do you find um in the years since because you've been in the country now for what over 20 years 33 Thir 33, 33 yeah. years she yes. came over when she was about 34. six months old so <laughs> <laughs> now it's 25 25, 25. i was 25. Goodness. there you go so. that's right because you uh you went to um uh university there as well and we'll touch university a little of naples and yes. then continued your education here yes. but um do you get back often or no no. No. Uh, usually every five years I okay. went back and um, no. But now in the, the, let's say the last time you were there, I'm just curious. Because two years again, ago. Oh, two years ago. Now, do you find that, it, let's say, in, in your old village or neighborhoods or region that, that a lot has changed? I mean, not just the money, but I mean, are people still at least a new crop are they they a little a little not as uh, some, old world as they used some to some of the families that i used to know or they saw me growing up um they're the same that we um are having some changes absolutely um like uh, illegal immigration there mm -hmm. it's also a very big issue yeah absolutely 
But I even mean, small towns like mine. But I mean, in terms of you know the just the way people interact with one another, do you find there's still a, a good bit of that there? Yes. Okay. Good. Yeah, there's good. still a little now, bit. Now, what's this rumor about pinching? I hear everybody oh, always boy. says pinching, pinching. We don't. I pinch. was nervous when the show started. <laughs> I thought I was going to get pinched, but no, no, not at all. Actually, it does not happen in my town. <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> but it happened to me actually when I went the first time I went to Naples to college and. And um, I got on the bus, and yes, I got pinched. There you go. I got pinched. Now, a nicer way of greeting someone, a handshake. Here is now again. Th these are uh, uh, available. I'm sure they can go to uh, the uh, to get more information. Linguaecucina.com for more information. But again, this um, a series of ebooks, twelve if I'm correct. Uh, we'll kind of intersperse that. Now, each each section talks a little bit about kind of indoctrinating a person who either may be thinking of going to Italy mm -hmm. or maybe maybe having someone come here and maybe wants Absolutely. to you know impress them without coming across as the ugly American. <laughs> no, but uh, see my goal is to really teach Americans about formalities mm -hmm. because uh, when you go to another country, especially to Europe, um, we are a little bit more formal. Right. So, uh, but of course, you know, once um, they learn that everything is, is going to be easy. Now, when I was a kid, I remember, and again, uh, uh, my, uh, my parents were from Portugal, so again, a different part of Europe, but again, a lot of the same values, a lot of the same uh, traditions, we'll mm -hmm. call it. Uh, I can remember, I get it now, but again, it was, sometimes things were done a little, a little more, um, how do I put it, uh, hard uh, you know then maybe it should have been but that's for another time mm -hmm. but you'd walk into a room and if you were a kid let's say eight or nine and you didn't address the people in the room it was like you know get out go out and come back in again you know that, absolutely <laughs> you know now it'd be like you know kids would be like well he was here a minute ago uh, yeah absolutely he, he left town you know mm -hmm. or he's on his phone you know so which, no. that that's for another show but anyway. <laughs> um, a, a scene from a, a, a region perhaps where you grew up San Lorenzo, Il Ponte, the bridge. Yeah. Uh, actually, we have a river called, mm -hmm. a, it's, it's actually, it's a brook, uh, Titerno. And then you see the beautiful mountain, Mount Urbano, which is a, a rich of uh, medicinal herbs. Okay. You can make a great, uh, healthy, healthful teas, actually. There you go. Make you feel better, honestly. And as we'll touch on a little bit later, uh, certainly uh, uh, one of the things that led uh, Lee to uh, doing what she's doing now with uh, Lingua y Cucina, again, was uh, some health issues that she had when she came to this country. So I bet you then you were probably saying, I wish I had some of those herbs, yes. you know? You know what I remember right now, for example, growing up, uh, my grandfather used to go on the mountain. I used to pick oregano, fresh oregano. And right now when I think of Mount Urbano, I can kind of like smell the fragrance, fragrance of that fresh oregano. It's, uh, yeah, every morning, like uh, four o'clock in the morning, used to go and uh, pick a fresh oregano. See, right now I'm, I'm having a, a strange scent of that, that wine that's <laughs> to my left. So it's a <laughs> little, uh, might be a little better than oregano, but uh, again, that's to each his own. Um, you said before you came to America, so I'm going to say probably low, late, mid to late 80s? 82. 82, okay. 1982. And, um, I did not speak English. Wow. Now, how did that come about? Again, I had cousins <laughs> that came over, and in those days, again, this is a kind of different time, yeah. uh, even in the 60s and 70s, and, you know, they would go to night school. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in this country, uh, how, do, how was your thing? Of well, I, I was working with the Italian community, uh, radio broadcasting. Okay. And uh, so I needed to work. Yeah. So it took me a little while to go back to school, which I did um, in New Haven first. And then uh, in four years, um, I earned a four de uh, three degrees, actually. Um, uh, a bachelor degree at Quinnipiac University mm -hmm. and uh, two previously, of course, uh, at um, Gateway in New Haven. Oh, in New Haven, okay. Yes, in wow. New Haven. And so all, in, the, all that while you were working? and uh, Yes. Wow. So four years, so three degrees, uh, I think, at Magna Cum Laude and the honors, high honors, Dean student list or whatever. So I was really serious about getting my degrees. I was 
kind of like a catching up with time, you know. Sure. So. And um, tell me a little bit, again, now, you came over, was family here? Did they, like, no. they used to bring people over, or you just no, came on your own? No, actually, that happened uh, because of someone uh, wanted to marry me. Ah. <laughs> My first husband, actually, um, he was Italian-American. He was a journalist. Okay. And uh, he owned a radio station, actually. Wow. I met him in Italy. Where was he when I needed a job? <laughs> <laughs> I was on a radio by the mid '80s. Oh, I wish yeah. I, I knew Lee back then. She could have yeah. hooked me up there. there Actually, I didn't want to come here. I really didn't want to come here. <laughs> I didn't want to get married. <laughs> wow. I grew up with that idea that I never wanted to get married. Then instead, I got married. Uh, he passed away. Passed away in '97, and then uh, I found a wonderful man. And uh, so I got a second chance in life. And, sure, uh, now, absolutely. You don't want to be like, uh, even even in, in my culture, you know, growing up with, with folks that, again, were from the old country, as they used to say, you know, when someone passed right away, you know, all black, you know, you look like the, the grandmother from, uh, you know, a big fat Greek wedding, you know, everybody <laughs> goes into seclusion. It's like, that's, life is too, uh, mm -hmm. is too rich to not enjoy. You know, May I share a secret with you? Sure. I love being married, actually. There you go, yeah, there you go. So I was very silly, I guess, thinking that I would never get married. Well, it's we, very all, good we all say that, right? <laughs> our, our, my yeah. executive producer, I said, oh, I'd never get married after the first time. And then, you know, what? So, <laughs> as I've said on the show before, redheads are my Achilles heel. So that, uh, <laughs> thank goodness Lee is married and not a redhead. Otherwise, who knows what would go on here. But anyway. But uh, no, it's great uh, that, uh, you know, things worked out. And again, you always have to, uh, no matter what, and I say this to myself all the time, no matter what, um, what kind of, um, you know, pitfalls uh, mm -hmm. we go through in life, you know, some people just kind of shut down and, hey, and maybe, you know, again, that's, that's their, their prerogative. Sometimes mm -hmm. things happen, they can't be helped. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you just have to keep, uh, as I always say, you just keep the head down and Absolutely. maybe up a little bit so you don't miss an opportunity, <laughs> yeah. but just keep moving forward and, uh, you know, just go from there. Yeah. So that's good. And look where you are now. Look at that. You know, I, this is my home. That's what I told myself um, the first time I went back to Italy after five years. Um, like I said before, I didn't want to come here. Mm -hmm. But uh, f five years later, the first time I went back home, uh, two weeks there, and I felt like uh, I I gotta go back home. <laughs> this home. Yeah. So I really I'm so grateful uh, for the wonderful opportunities uh, that this country really has given me, and uh, the life uh, that I'm sharing now with my husband, and uh, a life that uh, probably I'm sure I wouldn't have had in sure. Italy. And look at the, uh, you know, the, the cultural joy and education mm -hmm. that you're bringing to not only corporate America, but also to your many students, of which, you know, I saw some of the clips, again, that yes. just are, uh, you know, benefiting. Now, mm -hmm. to go back here, uh, uh, Lorenzello, is that how you... San Lorenzello. Yeah. It means mm -hmm. a saint, a saint little Lawrence. Okay. That's what it means. And the something ceramic. Città della Ceramica means a town of pottery. Okay. We make pottery. All right. There you go. So we that. have, uh, it's a town, uh, you know, rich of uh, artists, poets, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's incredible. Now, so. when, once you were here, again, did, did you ever experience, again, the term used here is like culture shock. You know, was there a, a lot of a, a adjusting that you felt you had to do, or were you just kind of poured yourself into your studies? and Here? Oh, no, I had to. Actually, I'm pretty good in kind of like, you know, adjusting yeah. to any environment. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty good at that, actually. But initially, you were like, I, you know, I want to go home. It's like... No. No, no, no. Oh. No, but when I went back to Italy, for oh, example, okay. like I said, uh, there was a thing, if you were at a, at a bank, right. and uh, you know you had, you know, you have to really respect the line. When in Italy, I remember uh, after I went back, I was like, uh, I was in the bank, and, and the people were kind of like doing their own trans you know, transaction, you know, like uh, behind me, I was like, hello? I'm here first, you know, <laughs> and then by the time I got to the window, sorry, we're closed. Oh. So that that bothered me. I said, you know what? This is in America. It does not happen. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but don't I, a, I don't tell ask Oprah students. that she was at a big store in London a few years ago, and all of a sudden they were like, "We're closed," and you know what? Yeah. 
she got all upset because you know Oprah, you know. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so, well. so you have to just stamp your feet and say, "Hey, Lee," you know. Yeah. Well. <laughs> I'm very important in America. You have to stay open, but yeah. you know. But I like kid, I said, I kid. Uh, Lee DeMilo uh, joining us here on Studio 411 for the hour. Lingua y Cucina. Uh, dot com, which, uh, if my notes are correct, uh, translates loosely into language and cooking. So now, how do you say the word kitchen? Cucina. Cucina, Cucina means uh, uh, kitchen, uh, cooking, and cuisine. Okay, so I was correct. That's All what, three what, of what them. threw me at first. Mm -hmm. uh, we missed one of the other ones. I forget what number two was, but here's talking about banking. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the one of the chapters or or uh, e-books in the series again. Uh, that deals with, again, uh, basics that you need to know when, of course, in Italy or in Europe for that matter, especially now with the Euro, uh, mm -hmm. money exchange, number, uh, time, phone calls, again, uh, you know, so again, uh, some of those words, again, I, I are, how do I describe it, uh, are similar to, let's say, Portuguese. So I kind of, oh, okay. you get a little like cambio and and some of the other ones I'm I like, could understand a lot of Spanish yeah yeah because yeah. of my Italian yes yeah. my my wife is uh, 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 fluent in both French and Spanish so again same thing she kind of you know you pick up different things even I think I'm sure with the Italian she, one thing that I would like to mention Larry sure. is that um, uh, my ebooks they're not just about learning a language but I really create a scenarios for students sure uh, so it's not just about uh, you know learning. For example, if you're at a, um, at a restaurant and uh, you decided to uh, go to a, one of these a family, small family type of restaurants outside, you know, in a small town, mm -hmm. uh, there's a chance they don't get a credit card. They don't take a credit card and uh, they don't give you the menu and they don't give you the check. Oh, no menu? No, they just come to you and they say, we have this today. Or it's on uh, perhaps a, a, a board of some it's just kind? Just like yeah. a family type yeah, of yeah. restaurant. And so I created scenarios for students because I know if you are on a tour, you know, but you know, everything is in English. But if you really wanted to learn about the Italian culture, uh, I think you really needed to immerse yourself in it. So the one day off that you have from the tour and you want to kind of like experience um, uh, this uh, lifestyle of Italians on your own, I think that's the best experience you can get. So and I created scenarios. No knock against the tour agencies, but uh, you yourself, for instance, if you were to go, and perhaps you have to go to another country that perhaps you have not been to, let's say, for instance, you went to China or mm -hmm. Greece, you would, you would rather go you and your husband would rather kind of do it on your own as Some, opposed to the you know everybody get in the bus like a herd of cattle and yeah and and so. uh, yeah but but at the same time in that case you would immerse yourself yeah. into the culture mm -hmm. and the language the, the key is is finding a, a situation like exactly uh, Lingue Cucina for example a students of mine ask me um, you know um, I have allergies so what do I do you know, or how do I say this? Um, also, for example, I was mentioning before, uh, suppose after, uh, you know, a great meal, um, you ask for the check and then you give the credit cards and they don't take it. And now you don't have enough money mm -hmm. to pay for it. I mean, what do you do? Start washing dishes. <laughs> no, you don't do that in Italy. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm trying to say, I create all sorts of scenarios so, so they know how to handle it. So it's not just about, uh, uh, you know, may I have a glass of red wine or house wine or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, an extra dish or anything like that. You know, absolutely not. It's and, more than that. And now through the adventures of Mauro and Carla, they kind of, you know, give you uh, a heads up on, on things you may need to know or need mm -hmm. to know how to do. And uh, you know what's nice about it? Uh, being an audiobook, yeah. actually, you can kind of like... Uh, uh, Stop, rewind it, go faster, and repeat it, be part of that conversation. Mm -hmm. So you really can assume a different roles. Sure. Not just uh, Maud and Carla, because right. Maud and Carla have also other guests, other friends they go out with. So you can immerse in different roles. There you go. Um, a shot that I liked, uh, this is from, I assume, a, a village like yours or perhaps yours. Uh, Actually, tell me. that's uh, San Lorenzello, yeah. Via Pasquale Massone. At the corner, it's uh, the elementary school when I 
I used to go. Yeah, and now yeah. that is uh, that is for a an upcoming celebration. Of in June, they saw that is a Corpus Domini. Okay. And uh, so we are Catholic, of course, and uh, this is a special time for me that um, I remember growing up. I used to do the same thing. So all the kids, you know, in in in, in the street, we used to kind of like compete and. Uh, and to become artist for that day, so we kind of like used to read them. Sure. Yeah. There you go. There's another another uh, chapter or section of the series again at the hotel. Again, uh, obviously important to make sure you not only get to the right hotel, but <laughs> you don't wind up in the servants' quarters. Actually, those are pictures that I took when Masb and I went to uh, Italy on our own honeymoon. Oh really? Yes. There you go. Yeah, I uh, noticed that I saw the the, the uh, palace the... over there in Florence, and I remember that those were the stairs that we took. Look at the art in there; it's absolutely magnificent. And look at that room there. I mean, uh, and that was uh, uh, our bedroom. You could so we wow. could see the Duomo from uh, our window. Our now, for room. someone who wants to go to Italy again, uh, are there like so, so many uh, parts in Europe that, that used to be very popular, uh, hostels, or I guess what we would consider La most pensione. like a bed and breakfast, but I'm sure on a on a, a lesser. La pensione. Yeah. It's called la pensione. Not not as opulent, perhaps as bed and mm -hmm. breakfast here, but still a, mm -hmm. a roof over your head, and then of course, as you mentioned, you have uh, hotels that I'm sure are. Uh, uh, not necessarily chain hotels. Is there a lot of Western influence there? Like you have Holiday Inns and the uh, Hilton. Actually, there are a lot of Americans now. Yeah, yeah. But yes. when you were growing up, it was more all Italian. More the state. Yeah, all, all Italian. Italian. There you go. Yeah. One yeah. thing that actually I showed a picture once or two my students about a bathroom, Italian bathroom, and that uh, they saw a little, <laughs> a little sink and they didn't know what it was. And I said, would you, would you, would you wash your feet in it? Well, let's say we call it bidet. And the, do some research on it, and then you tell me what it is. Okay. So it was really funny. There you go. Yeah. Lee DeMilo, linguaicucina.com, and joining us here for the hour on Studio 411. And again, uh, uh, immersing uh, our viewers uh, today uh, in culture, not just, uh, of course, uh, Italy, the main focus, but again, kind of give you a little bit of an inkling on uh, uh, what a, uh, a trip or experience in, the, in that part of the world would be. There's Lee right there, see, and uh, whipping something up and probably in the middle of one of her classes. So uh, mm -hmm. um, one other thing too, again now, the, the whole concept of uh, lingua y cucina again came as a result of an unfortunate time in your life where then you, you became ill. And uh, if you don't mind, share a little bit about all that that went on and then thankfully not only health wise but success wise it, it led to what you're doing now so uh, when my husband and I um, moved to Nawak to this uh, historic home and uh, we lived in the house while we were uh, renovating it and I got an allergy to sheetrock sheetrock okay, sheetrock yeah. Uh, sheet red dust and was very det detrimental to my lungs and my connective tissues. So um, I quit my job in sales and um, I could barely walk. Uh, my husband was very close to me during, it was a full year where, you know, from one doctor to another, uh, even to New York. And um, Nobody really, really did anything for me. No doctors. Right. No. But 11 months later, my husband told me, um, he gave me a little brown bag with a piece of sheetrock in it. And he told me, I just don't want you to tell the doctor, test me on this, and that's it. Oh, so at that point, all those months later, 11 it, months. It, there was no, no connection to the, the sheetrock. They, they were test, doctors who were testing me for the wrong, they were doing the wrong test. They were testing me for regular dust, okay. never for shira dust. Gotcha. That's what happened. So they kind of like they didn't listen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so. Interesting. Interesting. That's what happened really. Uh, so I did a lung biopsy and um, of course so they put me on uh, what I call evil medication, which is a prednisone. Prednisone, yes, a favorite of many that I know. 
Unfortunately, yeah. It, I yeah. I started writing notes um, on what was happening to me. It's not just a, you know your body changes, but also your personality Absolutely, changes. Yeah. And those notes actually became the the basis for my memoir. There you go. So yeah. I started writing a memoir on that. Um, to, to quote someone near and dear to me who has said, you know, it's amazing all, even all these years after what happened to you, of course, we didn't know each other then, but for, even from that point in time to now, the quote was, you would think they would come up with something better to give to whatever, whether it's bronchitis or whatever other, other things it's dispensed for than this, this drug, which uh, again, everyone I've ever known who's been on it it's a steroid in a sense, it is, uh, and it just plays havoc with, as you said, not only your body, but also your personality. You know, and, and, uh, my, belief is, my belief is this, um, probably there was a reason why, maybe they, whatever, whatever the reason is, I feel that maybe I needed to learn certain lessons the hard way. That's what I really mm -hmm. believe, sure. and um, which I did after that. <laughs> but uh, um, I don't blame the doctors. I don't blame anybody, uh, which I did at the beginning. I blamed the doctors. I blamed everybody, and including myself. But then it's like a stage. You go through stages, and you mature, you know, during this stage. And so you are given a second chance. That's what I feel it was, you know, I went through. I was given a second chance in life, and uh, I needed to make a difference, not only in my life, but also maybe in somebody else's life. Sure. People that I maybe, you know, I, I met through, you know, on my path along the way. Now, there was a section that I had, had uh, researched on you, again, as far as the, the, the healing process. Talk mm -hmm. a little bit about, you know, again, you never know who this is going to touch, you know, the old saying, even if it helps <laughs> one person uh, because of some of the sim similarities and things they may be going through. But you talk about uh, some of the healing, again, or, or the switch to organic foods. Mm -hmm. um, uh, help me with the pronunciation here. You, you uh, got involved with a, a Japanese healing technique. Usui Reiki. How do you pronounce it? Usui. Usui. Usui Reiki. Okay. Mm -hmm. And tell me a little bit about it's uh, not just that, but it's uh, like a bunch of um, other therapies, uh, like a heart math, mm -hmm. a heart and uh, mathematics. Uh, it's a science, actually. Uh, it's not a voodoo. <laughs> Some people, when they, you know, they, you tell them it's about energy work, they kind of like, oh, what is that? No, it's a science actually behind that. Um, yes, I discovered uh, Usui Reiki when I was really, you know, at the bottom, <laughs> I reached the bottom, uh, I was told by the doctors that they didn't know if I was going to make it, mm. okay? And uh, I was mad at God, honestly. I had a spiritual crisis. I told you before, I, I, I'm Catholic here. But uh, uh, one day when I saw myself, like, you know, I kind of like, I really got angry at God only to find out later that it was not his fault. Right. It was not. So there is no one day that goes by that I don't ask God f to forgive me for just blaming him at, at that moment. Um, the healing had to happen within my soul, within my inner self. And one of the lessons that I really needed to learn was it really to find my inner self, to get in touch with that. Uh, because I realized that at that point in my life, uh, I forgot who I was. I almost didn't know who I was anymore. So that's what I'm saying. Maybe one, one thing, one lesson I needed to learn was to find myself. And, and I did. Do you think that uh, a, a lot of us in life, not just yourself, but people, again, you wouldn't necessarily know, but that people all go through, not because of an illness, but for different reasons. They just have a, a, a trouble. I think it's true that people just, 
don't know where their center is, you know, and I know there are people do different things, yoga, it, therapies, all sorts of stuff. That's why, like, for example, with my teaching, I tell students, uh, you know, uh, learn about the lifestyle of another country, like Italy, okay? For example, Italians, they, they love a little bit uh, in an easier lifestyle, like lay back a little bit. Uh, you know, enjoy your, your wine, uh, even before dinner with your other half. You don't have to rush after work, uh, making dinner or whatever, and then forgetting that you are living that moment right there. So sit down, enjoy yourself, enjoy each other company, enjoy a glass of wine, and uh, enjoy life a little bit more. Really. I, I find, and I've said this but to people I know and, and also here on the air, um, when I was 30 years ago, I, I, I think, I don't know how I existed because now life is so, you know, and I'm not a, I'm not a person that's into, you know, the, the, the texting, texting and the this and that, and, uh, you know, I mean, <laughs> someone will say, oh, you spend a lot of time on the computer. Well, I'm doing it for uh, different reasons, not just, you know, endlessly playing, you know, whatever video games, which I guess serves some purpose, but mm -hmm. I think, you know, to, to excess is, is definitely a problem in this country. But I just think, you know, I look back and I'm like, I don't know how I did it. Because again, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, life seems so much simpler. Now, you always feel like you, you can never catch your breath. And I don't know if I'm expressing myself the right way. So, I know, you know, yeah. I, and you just have to keep reminding yourself, mm -hmm. you know what, whether yeah. it's sometimes, like I had a guest on who, who said to me, uh, privately said, sometimes I just have to learn how to say no. Another lesson that I had to learn, yeah. <laughs> how to say no. <laughs> See, and Lee didn't say no when I called her, so that was mistake number one. <laughs> and she had to do it again, oh well, you know, but no, no, I kid. But no, it's, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they, they just say, turn this off, you know, turn that. Unfortunately, I think sometimes, and I'm not sure why, we also live in a culture in this country, and I'll be honest, I'm guilty of this as well. Once you're home, you don't even want to answer the door. And this ties in with like the way uh -huh. in this country, um, people in the old days, I'm, I'm going back to 30s, 40s, I wasn't around then, but from what you see and read mm -hmm. about movies, I know you, you would think I was from that era, but no, I, mm -hmm. I only look 35. <laughs> but anyway, it was there, people would sit on their porch. Again, very much like the old world. People knew who you were now, you know, I couldn't tell you who that person is. I couldn't tell you. Yeah. And again, you know, I, I don't know. I'll it's tell you a funny story, uh, Larry. Um, I was, at, I believe, 16, 15, 16 years old. Uh, and uh, of course, it's the age when, you know, boys like girls and vice versa, sure. right? And I remember that there was a guy who was courting me and he was on a motorcycle going up and down the street. <laughs> and suddenly, and I was walking, actually, I was walking home, and one of my neighbors, I gotta tell you, came downstairs, he told the boy to leave me alone and to never come into my, in the street again. <laughs> this was my neighbor, it was not my family. <laughs> So very protective. They looked they're, out they're, for it, yeah. It, it, I, I don't know that that's the case. And I don't think it happens here. <laughs> In my street, at least. You know, and part of it, too, is because people are almost afraid. Uh, I give you, for instance, you know, I was, as a kid, you know, what they called in this country a dreaded latchkey child. I had a mother who worked second shift for many years, later first. But when I was a kid, but then it was usually times where an hour or two, where today, my goodness, they'd be calling DCF because, well, <laughs> one parent yeah. was not home from work yeah. and the other one, you know. So being an only kid, you had no choice yeah. but to, and, and I think it's made me better for who I am in some yes. ways. Others would tell you differently, but anyway. Yeah. But, you know, when I was eight, I knew every bus route in the city I lived in. Now but it's I, like, oh, they can't go by themselves. They can't do this. You know, though, uh, what I felt was a sense of belonging. Mm -hmm. You not only belong to that family, you belong to the neighborhood, you belong to the town, a sense of belonging. Yeah. You know, I miss that about Italy, yeah. honestly. You know, it, I don't find that here, I really don't. Yeah. You, you work hard at that. 
you know, uh, to having friends and uh, to have, uh, you know, good neighbors. But you, you work hard at that. Yeah. And, but and, it, you, it, you, it, you know. Because people are stressed out. People yeah. are whatever. They may, they may loosen up, to coin a phrase, but sometimes the loosing, mm -hmm. it takes, it goes, goes too far the other way. You yeah. know, that we have dependencies and issues and addictions yeah. and things. And people just, and again, you know, they, they don't. They don't know, and I think that helped me in that growing up in a quote, we used to call it Little Lisbon in, in my parents' home, you know, but it instilled a certain thing in you that doesn't mean I'm perfect by any, any stretch. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> 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 he coughs. But anyway, but the point is, was that you just, you, you I think, are w able to withstand certain things better. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I'm happy, like, for instance, growing up when I did, I wouldn't want to be that age growing up now. You know, I know this all is technology and all mm -hmm. this and that. And you just have people that don't even, you know, don't even like they just cross path. They don't even look up at you. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. You know, <laughs> but I, I try actually to convey this to my students. And uh, it's so beautiful. I love a lingua cucina for a million reasons. But one of them is it gives me the opportunity to witness students becoming friends. Uh, they come, for example, to my classes. They bring wine. They bring a particular wine of a, a, a wine of a particular region, mm -hmm. uh, food of a particular region. That's how we learn. That when they come in, they're all friends. They didn't know each other before. Now they're all friends. They speak Italian. They know where the dishes are, where the glasses are, and the, the beauty of that is that they conversate in Italian. It's like, would you like? Uh, white already this evening, you know, and uh, doing things together. Like I said, it's not just about learning the language. It's a beautiful friendship interaction that I witness. And to me, it's like, uh, it's not about money. It's not about, you know, the business. Sometimes it's about that. Sure. It makes me proud of what I'm doing, happy. And it gives me a purpose in life, and I guess that's what I found uh, through, you know, all the bad years of illness, whatever. But here I am. I'm like uh, I, whatever I did learn, I learned that. I learned that. Fine. But now I enjoy every minute of what I'm doing. And really. Th and this, as we said in the intro, this is all again the fruits of, unfortunately, the the yep. suffering for a. a, a a long period of time that you had to go through, but then, mm -hmm. again, as you said, you know, life, God, religion, whatever uh, yep. uh, circumstances, uh, yep. depending on what you believe, uh, steer you in hopefully a positive direction. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's good. Here's a photo that I like. That is, I don't know that Lee would necessarily serve that, but I just like the, the presentation. I just think that's, <laughs> oh, I'll give you another one too. In, in my family's culture, if someone showed up, obviously, because, you know, it wasn't going to start the pots and pans going, mm -hmm. but my parents would immediately pick up the phone and order a couple of pizzas or order food, to, you know, to bring in, you know, or there mm -hmm. was something to fire up the grill. You know, people would show up unexpectedly sometimes, or and they were yep. friends or family. Now... <laughs> we didn't have the phone actually growing up. Yeah. We, and, uh, and when people uh, happened to be home, uh, my, my mother used to have, you know, those big loaf of bread like that. Sure, sure. And uh, she used to cut the prosciutto, salami, or soppressata, formaggio, cheese, yeah. right on top of the, the piece of bread. Oh, my God, to die for. <laughs> to die yeah. for. But, you know, what I'm saying people like uh, they went out of their way. I mean, I give you yeah. for the viewers a uh, 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 you know, a little tidbit uh, behind the scenes, you know, Lee shows up, you know, she's honoring me along with her husband, Frank, by, you know, coming in and, and doing the show with us. And she's bringing me, you know, mm -hmm. this and bringing that for the crew. I mean, this is, you know, again, other yeah. people be like, you know, well, let's get this over with, no, <laughs> you no, know, no, so, no. so it's, you know, again, mm -hmm. that's, that's that European culture that, uh, you know, that is prevalent, uh, okay. which is great. Um, these folks here again. This is an example of some uh, some students, perhaps. Or? Students, yes. Uh, we uh, I take students out to uh, an Italian restaurant. Uh, we have our class over there, our exam, mm -hmm. but also they have the opportunity to interact in Italian with the the, the chef or the waiter, or whatever. Nice. So it's, it's and now great. the classes uh, span how, how long of a period? Uh, uh, six I, weeks? Uh, ten sessions. Yeah. I like, um, you know, it sh this should be ten hours, but we always go, you know, every, you know, a little bit over. 
uh, but students like, like a regular. After the 10 sessions are done, they are for another 10 sessions, another sure. 10 sessions, because they really enjoy. I don't think you find, uh, um, at least, uh, you know, I, I'm not aware of, um, classes where they mm, they do what I'm doing, teaching Italian, the Italian language with the culture, with the food, and it is a wonderful atmosphere. Not only I, that, I don't think it's, so. it's a situation where you're, you know, no one is is you know uh, inherently looking at the clock, you know, saying, no, okay, no, you know, no. okay, therapy session's over. You no, know, no, you're, no. <laughs> you know, you're you're doing it again with not only a business motif in mind, but also you know, the love of what you're doing. Now tell me a little bit about now when you, when you do it for um, corporations or businesses, again, as I said earlier, it's to um, perhaps make them a little more smoother around the edges because whether it's France or, or China or whatever, yeah, obviously no. they have to Italy. use other means. But for Italy, you're trying to make these group of business people, salespeople, the like, a little bit more, as I said, not the ugly American. To no. Kind of make them feel like, okay, Americans you're... are not ugly. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's a term of sometimes people that like, in, even in business, they they show up in a foreign land and they just expect everything to kind of be handed to them. Oh. What you're doing is educating them on not only the culture, the language, so that they do a, a presentation that's going to impress. Because again. They think sometimes, this is my opinion, that just by showing up, oh, you know, regardless of how big the company is, so, that yeah. they're just going to, oh, here, they're going to toss the business our way. It doesn't work like now, that. Now, the thing is, is that, uh, see, Italy, it's like, it's, um, it's a boot. However, I say that we have a four Italy's. Northern Italy, Central Italy, Southern Italy, and then the island of Sicily and Sardinia. Gotcha. So they have four, I I Italia. <laughs> Um, and uh, so we have uh, differences, cultural differences within Italy itself. So for example, in the northern Italy, uh, let's take a food, okay? Food is like uh, you eat a lot of butter, they use butter, uh, creamy sauce, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, more than anything. Um, cow cheese, of course. If you go a little bit in the central Italy, you start uh, eating uh, goat cheese, sheep cheese, like in the southern Italy. And then instead of butter, we use olive oil, fresh herbs like uh, basil, prezzemolo, like parsley, you know, all that stuff. And um, wines, we make our own wine, whatever you go, really, okay? Um, if you take a Sicily and Sardinia, oh my God, they are so, different. It's like a Sicily, almost a Sicilian to say we are not Italians, we are Sicilians, you know. <laughs> uh, but every part of Italy, doesn't matter if you're talking about northern to, you know, the islands, is so unique and so, so much to explore and to learn about it. It's fascinating. And you obviously try to give the potential future tourists, exactly uh, the, the the ones that take the class on a personal exactly. level, you give them the heads up that just like in this country, mm -hmm. yeah, if you go to the west or down mm -hmm. to the deep south, yeah. be conscious of, yeah, you may know the language, but be conscious yeah. of the um, uh, different... Uh, uh, the traditions of the, you know, yeah. the customs and all that stuff, even with business, for example. Uh, I know um, Northern Italy is more like a business, it's industrial, mm -hmm. okay, more industrial than uh, Southern, but business done a little bit differently, okay? So uh, it's a little bit more fo formal than uh, Southern Italy. Yeah. So we are less formal in, in Southern Italy. Now look, here's a, here's a photo. Now imagine, I don't even know what else That's is going on in this picture. <laughs> Can you imagine the delicacies that are, that are here? And this, this may just be like one class or maybe at the end they're doing a little celebrating and then you put in the wine. Oh my goodness, this is like, yeah. like no class I ever took in college. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, That's yeah. great. Uh, Lee DeMilo joining us here for the hour on Studio 411 for more information. Uh, linguaicucina.com. Uh, Lee, of course, a uh, former radio broadcaster uh, in Italy, uh, uh, restaurateur, now in a multilingual corporate Italian language trainer. Uh, 
a series. Oh, we even talk about business etiquette in Italy. I'm sure she covers all the bases. As mm -hmm. I said, it's important, especially for those business types, because mm -hmm. you are providing a service that I have no doubt on a business level has to be, uh, has to pay so many dividends to corporate types because you are, you are instructing them on what they need to do, say, mm -hmm. avoid, and, and make a good presentation. Actually, my first uh, call, uh, phone call was uh, from um, an American company, marketing company here. Uh, and um, I was told, uh, I have a strange request. We are promoting uh, an Italian product in this country, and uh, we would like to train our sales force. Yeah. Uh, not only about a little bit of the language, but about being a little bit act like Italians. So uh, I, I had a lot of fun with that. I, I wrote the script uh, with the audio, but also I did the role plays. There were, uh, you know, many, probably 50 uh, salespeople from uh, all over the United States coming here. Wow. Yes, and it was a lot of fun. That was my first project. And the first thing she taught them was thank you and goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> or thank you and please sign on the dotted line. There you go, sign that contract. How do you say contract in there? Contratto. Okay, very, very good. Very you good. know what? Handshake is much better than a signature. I know, I saw that about you now, uh, about not just you, but that's uh, your culture feels that way. Is Absolutely. That, uh, if I shake hands with you, that's my word on it. There you go. Well, and again, that is something that there's so much, uh, uh, and I understand it has to be to a certain degree, but what I grew up at least believing the same thing, handshake, a person's word, boy, now it's like you better get a legal document because <laughs> unfortunately it's not you or I, it's other people or other, I know, whatever, Americana that have ruined that. You know, mm -hmm. and I know I've gotten burned when I haven't had something, uh, a verbal mm -hmm. agreement, and then it's like, oh, I didn't say that or this that. Well, you know, th there yeah. you go. That's the, the you know the handshake, the word, or the three hours of talking back and <laughs> forth. That w yeah. where did we get the wrong impression? You know, yeah. but that's you know that that's the way of the world today. So, but but I, I agree with you a thousand percent. Mm -hmm. Here's again. Uh, uh, educate me as far as um, oh Italian <laughs> Italian delicacies. Uh, obviously, my favorite the the cannoli. Of course, I could eat those until <laughs> until I would probably have clogged arteries. But give do me give me know, some other ones. Actually, do you know that I learned how to eat sweets when I met my my husband Frank? Yeah. Um, so it passed away well, eighteen years. <laughs> uh, growing up, um, I remember my family. Uh, my mother did not bake was very rarely that she baked something. Uh, but there were, on special occasions, um, we would get, um, you know, a dessert, uh, cannolis, mm -hmm. fogliatelle, whatever, at the bakery, at the local bakery. But it had to be a special occasion. So if we had the sweets maybe three, four times in a year, that was it. So we didn't grow up on sugar. No, no. no. And um, no. what is now? You've told me again off air that uh, obviously you've adjusted your your eating habits, et cetera, et cetera, as a, as a result of the uh, autoimmune illness that, that you have or mm -hmm. under uh, you know uh, now suffer with, I guess, for lack of mm -hmm. a better word. But again, have you found that? It's made it harder for you to impart, you know, the, all the cultural cuisines because you're like, well, uh, yeah, go ahead, enjoy. I, I you know, no, I can't actually, touch. No, actually, I modify my recipes. So, for example, instead of using uh, regular flour, uh, for um, I use uh, rice flour. Okay. Or my beautiful cheesecake, I use a goat cheese. I'm allergic to uh, dairy, for example. Okay. So I use a goat cheese and uh, a little bit of honey. Uh, you know, and it's great, and uh, like a lemon custard. Because you were telling me, was it cheesecake, or what was it you were telling me where you used the, the goat cheese and, yeah, some, yeah, and goat the che cream, uh, no, no, not cream cheese. No, no, uh, no, no, just a goat cheese yeah. and a lemon curd, just a goat butter yeah. and lamb, fresh lemon, organic and, lemon. And very limited on sugar. No, I didn't use the sugar at all. I no, used a little bit. No, but I'm saying in your own uh, uh, yeah, personal I, eating. Yeah, my, yeah, yeah. I, I use a little bit of a honey, uh, yeah. which is a local honey, actually. Yeah. And it's really, really don't need a sugar. But of course, we all deviate. You know, we sure. all, when we see sweets, of course, we enjoy it and, you know, said, okay, but we shouldn't do that, right? 
We shouldn't do that. <laughs> Again, we, we all, all, like, we all, have we our, all like dessert. We know? all have our vices. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's very sinful. The dessert is sinful, yes. We always ask guests in our remaining moments here on Studio 411, our guest uh, Lee DeMilo, uh, linguaicucina.com for more information. Uh, who has influenced you outside of your field? Ah, it's a hard question. Maybe my mother. Okay. Um, my mother was a strong woman. She had the 10 kids. Wow. Yes. Uh, she passed away um, two years ago. Uh, she was 82. My father was 90. Um, I don't know. She, I guess, instilled in me a lot of, of this, that I could do anything that I wanted to. I could do it. I wanted to do it. I think there so. You know. In a, you know. Sure. And, and Maybe she didn't know that, but probably <laughs> that's what I feel. Any suggestions for the rest of us as far as uh, living healthy and uh, keeping the weight off? Any, because again, obviously all this rich food and great food, uh, sometimes people can, uh, you know, we, uh, we all have our, our vices uh, that we, we indulge too much. I think uh, enjoy life, but also get to know the other person and enjoy the other person. Because every person has a lot of goodness. And we tend to look at all the best stuff about that person. Mm. Uh, it's very hard. It's a very hard thing to do. Still for me today, it's still hard. Sure. But uh, I think uh, if we enjoy ourselves and the company of the other person, enjoy life a little bit more, we'll be a much um, better world, I think. Uh, this. Oh, uh, we only got a couple of minutes left. Real quick, oh, okay. either in Italian or in English, favorite word? Oh, andiamo? <laughs> <laughs> Which translates into let's get going? Yes. That's let's, her favorite word, no, huh? No, 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 no. I, th I think she must say that to her husband a lot. Let's get going. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right. No, oh, I was looking for another <laughs> word, but I'll, we'll we'll go with that. That's that. Uh, write that down. Okay. Lee DeMilo, uh, who is the uh, the uh, the mastermind behind uh, linguaicucina.com. Again, uh, you've seen Lee featured in Connecticut Magazine. Uh, again, for more information, uh, uh, linguaicucina.com, uh, which uh, stands for Language and Cooking. Uh, the book series or ebook series. Uh, uh, let's see, I have to read it. They have it, Carla and Mauro, but it's really Mauro and Carla Bianchi's Trip to Italy, which again is kind of uh, the fictitious characters voiced by several people and their encounters and uh, learning about the, the culture and the, the, the food and the, the mannerisms and the ways of, uh, of the Italian culture. And uh, again, just uh, uh, great to have you here with us. And uh, Pleasure. we look forward to having you back on. All right. Pleasure. Thank you. Uh, Larry De Silva. thanking you out there for joining us on this episode of Studio 411. Uh, we hope you uh, enjoyed uh, joining us for the hour, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again uh, next time uh, here on the program. For now, have a great week.